Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tea Sundays. Today we are going to be talking to an investment banker by the name of Usizo. Um, so I'll start off by asking him to introduce himself. So yeah. No problem, thanks. Sure. Uh, hi guys, my name is Usizo Butelezi. I am an investment banking analyst at an international investment bank. Been doing this for almost two years now. And yeah, I'm excited to join you guys today. Okay, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, can you tell us how long you've been working in the investment banking space? So I have been actually joined at the beginning of last year, straight out of university. Uh, prior to that, my only other experience in investment banking was a six week internship with Citibank, um, which was great. And then sort of transitioned into the working world at the beginning of last year with uh, Morgan Stanley. Okay. And how's your experience been thus far? Very challenging, very tough. I think <laughs> this one back is, you know, it's not as glamorous as they make it out to be. I think, you know, what initially got me interested was watching, you know, movies like uh, Wall Street, Money Never Dies, yes. Wolf of Wall Street, I think is a famous one that a lot of people like to give reference to. Definitely. Um, but I mean, the environment is very different, it's very professional, very okay. sophisticated. I mean, the type of work you do is like, not elementary okay I and mean, it requires you to consistently apply yourself learn new things um all the time yeah um and it really forces you to brush up on your softer skills because i mean you are in a very client facing role so you know from day one you literally going to attend meetings with cfo ceo so i mean very enriching um experience but yeah very challenging very tough because expectations are very high mm, makes a lot of sense um let's break down a little bit of what you've said so let's start off from you coming into the space. Can you tell us what you studied in university and um, how you then got into the space of investment banking? So I uh, went to school at the University of Cape Town and I studied a Bachelor of Business Science, Finance with Accounting. Okay. So this is a degree actually only offered by UCT. Okay. So it's a four-year finance honors degree, mm -hmm. but it's mixed with the actual SAC CA stream BCom accounting. So essentially, you can, at the end of your degree, you have a, an honors in finance and just the underground element of an actual accounting stream. So Makes sense. it mixes in, unlike a typical commerce degree, it has a lot of maths, a lot more stats, mm -hmm. do a lot more philosophy courses. So I think okay. it really grounds you well to make you an overall um, sort of candidate. Sure. And I think with regards to investment banking, I used to be part of an, like two societies at UCT called um, APSIP, so the Association of Black Security and Investment Professionals, and a society called InvestSoc. And uh, these societies used to have a lot of events where they'd invite major corporates, like from your consulting firm, your McKinsey's, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, who would always used to come and give speeches. But obviously, a lot of these opportunities um, that they would try come lecture us about will only geared towards third years and final years. Sure. And obviously, I was. I guess fortunate and unfortunate to go to school before COVID and yeah. after COVID. So like before COVID, they used to come to school, like to university a lot, okay. used to do events consistently, and then okay. 2020 happened, third year. Because typically, um, if you want to break into investment banking, the best way to get in is to get an internship, okay. like with the bank, and then that sort of, sort of helps you land that full-time role or okay. grad or opportunity. Okay. But unfortunately, in my third year in 2020, it was full lockdown, COVID, no internships so i mean that was very tough i mean i started had to i had to start reevaluating um what i wanted to do mm -hmm. because i think you know my interest for investment banking stemmed from all these um, events that i used to attend sure fortunately enough in my final year um two banks actually opened up with internship opportunities that was bank of america and Citibank. unfortunately i actually didn't get the internship at bank of america um very competitive slots, three internship slots Jeez, across the country. That's insane. Citibank, I mean, came up maybe a month or two later. Yeah. Two slots across the country. Yeah. Fortunate enough to land one. So I think that really bridged the gap for me. Um, and then from there, I landed a full time offer. Okay. But I think, yeah, one thing maybe I did not mention is the sort of prep required to prepare just for an interview. Yeah, for I was going to get to the next. That was my next question is, um, since there's so few slots, what would you advise someone who wants to prepare and put their best foot forward for um, an interview? I think not to sound um, 
yeah, I don't know what the word is for it necessarily, but I mean like Graves Matter. Yeah. Um, I, I I won't say I was the highest performer. Yeah. Uh, caveat: I was never I never made golden tea or yeah. things meritless, but I mean I think my my level of academic academia was quite was quite good. I mean, for example, you just need a minimum of sixty five percent. Yeah. But obviously, if you're gonna be on the low end, you have to substantiate like why. why? So yeah. I used to play sport for UCT. I was chairperson of Absurd. I used to nice. co-founded an NPO with one of another candidate fellow, yeah. uh, a friend of mine. Um, so there was a lot that I could say, hey, you know, my grades weren't that good. Well, not that good, they weren't the best, but yes. you know, I was doing all of this and yes. I maintained. Second thing is prep. Now, yeah. it's not like an ordinary job where, I mean, if you just apply everything you learned in school, your daily experience is gonna work. No, it doesn't really, it does not work like that at all. Jeez, um, okay, tell I think us more. This is like something people don't tell you. So I only learned this actually after I spoke to like a recruitment type coach. Okay. Because I attended, um, the, oh, I actually bought me, I attended the R&B winter school at the beginning of my final year. Okay. So in my How year. do you get to uh, attend the R&B winter school? Winter school, you just apply. Okay. Um, then grades. Fortunately for that, there was no interviews. I mean, strong cover letter, good CV. But I'll get to that. And then afterwards, like, I realized from that experience, I was okay, I want to be a banker. I mean, I think that, that was like the stamp that says, okay, like, what do I need to do I mean, if I don't do this, that means I need to go CT, do my CTA, become a chartered accountant if this doesn't work out. Because that sure. was always my backup plan, right? Yeah. Um, reached out to this graduate recruiter, a uh, lady that goes by the name Tracy Ashington. She actually sort of broke me down how to break into investment banking. And she made me realize I was 100% not ready. Bear in mind, applications are only open like four months down the line. And she's Jeez. saying you're actually not like ready, ready to apply. And I was like, I mean, I'm a high performing what? individual. Yeah. It was like, okay, what do I need to do? Yes. So obviously I shared this information with one of my other very close mates, um, who was also actually an investment banker. And we're both like been studying the same thing. And you're like, yo man, you need to do something. Yeah. Um, so she broke it down. So like there's this book that yeah. I recommend everyone. If you are interested in investment, it's like yeah. the Bible. Okay. They call it, um, 100 investment banking questions okay and it just takes it, it tests your technicals and um, where can you get the book um there's just a link it's just i usually just type it in online okay. but maybe i'll be able sure. to share a link with you after this okay um yeah and then you have to you have to literally i, I would say cram that thing not cram it but really literally understand because it taught, it tests a lot of corporate finance principles that you don't necessarily learn in school i was doing finance honors and we there's a lot of stuff that you actually need to be able to break it down, you know, to the ordinary, you know, person. And yes. I think that's the type of understanding that is required for investment banking. Just for the interview? Yeah, no, these are the interviews because there's yes. like four rounds of interviews, but I'll, I'll get through how the interview process sure. like, like pans out. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, investment bankers are very pedantic. They're mm. very specific. And it's like, there's like a uniform for the way they do things. So the way you craft your CV, mm. there is only one format. Okay. So I think... Yeah, I mean, that's also something you can go online and search investment banking, CV format, and you will only see one format. <laughs> if you deviate, yeah. can't be mistakes in your CV, there actually cannot be mistakes in your okay. CV. Okay. Things like fonts matter, surprisingly. Like, for me, it was like, ah, oh, it actually really, 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 really does matter. Um, oh, okay. And you speak to somebody, that's actually it. Because I think, obviously, it's good to have somebody on the end to give you good insight, because I think when people think investment bank, they think I'm going to be doing financial modeling. Yes. I'm going to be doing, but then actually doing a ton of research, um, just a lot of an actual analysis. Yeah. Um, so you, I didn't even really know what I was doing, mm. what, what I was going to do until I actually got into my internship, which why it helps because it's like, you think you can work long hours till it's like your third, 2 a.m. night. Mm. And you just, yeah, I mean, that's why it helps to get that into it. Very, very hard to break in without. So not that people haven't done it, but yes. it definitely. I mean, if you are trying to land it like in an international top like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, Goldman, yeah. you really, really need to understand that there's probably one, two slots max yeah. going out, going around every at each of those. So, like in terms of prep, there, there is no room for it. Yes. So that's why I actually had to prep like months in advance. So by the time an interview comes, everything seems mechanical. Okay. That's fair. And then let's talk us through the interview stages. So how it goes is banks are very cheeky. You, see, you would submit sort of going from the actual application portal. Yes. Obviously, you send in your CV in the correct format. Yes. Cover letter, 
very correct formats. Also, caveat that someone actually helped me that was in banking. Okay. Sort of, that's how I know. He was like, yeah, that's how it works. But anyway, okay. coming back, you submit those. Obviously, submit all your, your relevant transcripts. Sure. Um, no, things like references aren't that important in investment banking okay. as, as a junior. So, okay. yeah. Um, then they make you do a higher view. So, a higher view is like a form of online interview that's done with as essentially screen, screening done by like a bot. So, okay. So they'll be like, why do you want to join insert bank's name? Yes. Um, give us a reason why, what is investment bank that do? Like they ask like general questions, but fortunately for higher view stuff, like they all over YouTube, you can okay. actually type in higher view, inserts firm names, whatever questions they ask. Yes. It literally gives you a backdrop. It's okay. This is actually what they usually That's ask. That's good. Yeah. So a lot of these things. It helps if you more or less understand the process before you even start applying. Yes. So you can know, okay, at this point I need to do this. Okay. After that, um, it'll... There really is no room for error. <laughs> really. Okay. And then? After that, it then moves to like these online tests that they make you do, right? Okay. So it'll be like a mathematical, it'll be a logic and reasoning test. Um, yeah, these are very... I guess like there's some form of IQ filters in a way. Yeah. Not all the banks do them, but some do. But some do, Which yeah. I don't necessarily remember if I did. It's just that I had done so many. Yes. That it was like, okay. Um, and then post that, you you cross your fingers and you hope you get that first round interview. Yes. Um, get the first round interview. First round interview would probably would be with the junior. So okay. in investment banking, how the levels go, your grad, if that bank has a grad, analyst, associate, after associate, you become VP, okay. executive director, managing director. So there's essentially okay. more or less five tiers. Sure. So a junior would be your analyst and your associates, mainly interviewing you. Okay. Interview typically ran by an associate, um, probably been doing it for maybe three, four years. Sure. They'll, they'll run you through. They will ask you, they don't necessarily need to know you, but they will ask you the elementary questions okay about um corporate finance what it is yeah depending on the bank some, some of them actually turn up the intensity from day one so they'll ask you walk me through a dcf which is a discounted cash flow valuation and i mean it's not that complex but you need to be able to say it <laughs> you need to break it down to yeah. an ordinary person you know you can't necessarily quote quote for quote they'll ask you um very funny question how do you value apples on a tree what and obviously, if you understand valuation methodology, yes. you, you would know how to approach that. But like, if you actually understand it, not actually crammed it. Because okay. you can understand, I mean, these principles apply to everything. I mean, you, I could ask you, like, value that bag. Yeah. I mean, you know, there, there's ways around it. You'd use maybe a relative valuation. But then from there, it's like a lot of easy questions. And unfortunately, maybe you get, fortunate, sorry, maybe you get like, a chance to have one wrong question and they'll run you through it yes. but i mean it's not a good look you want no questions yes. i mean unanswered correctly yes so these would be very basic nothing high level cool based on that then you have an opportunity to ask questions and i mean sure. as you guys all know you always come with questions you prepare to ask yeah but i think in investment you have to be very strategic because mm -hmm. You can't ask everyone at different levels because there's multiple rounds of interviews. You have to be strategic at the level of question for that person. Okay. Obviously, as they get more senior, yes. it needs to be more relevant to them. And then, obviously, at the end, you, it has to be very high level because that's yes. an executive, right? Yeah, makes cool. sense. If they like you, um, not even if they like if you get everything right convincingly, yes. it's not necessarily about they like because they don't really gauge. Personality. If they do a few questions here and there, depending on the firm, how they run it. But typically, it's just a screen for people who are chancing with the interview. Okay. Maybe beat the screening stuff, but yeah. And then I think... The do they ask you about yourself at all? They do. I mean, some banks, because I've interviewed at, uh, at a few other banks, okay. the way they run their interview process, like you'll get there, other people tell you you need to know your story. Yeah. So you actually need to have a well articulated one minute, 30 second summary of your entire life that's so concise, speaks to all your qualities without like, like yeah, no waffling. Jeez. So like I remember I used to have a story because I remember the, the main reason I, I, I told I didn't get the first internship I applied yes. for was like, I mean, your story was just all over the place. You knew your stuff, but I mean, you need to be able to commun communicate, you know, efficiently, succinctly. Yes. So it was like, okay actually did not so i remember prepping like yeah what's my story only to get there to get off something completely different like they were just like hey man what's a dcf 
hey man. Okay. And then only in the second round, like, oh, tell me about yourself, yes. you know. So they, they level it. Okay. And so then let's go to the second, second round. round. Yeah. Um, second round is where it's hot, okay. depending on the firm. But second round is when that's your deep technicals. Like, that's okay. that. You need to know that book. Not even that book, but your, your corporate finance principles. Yes. Um, they ask you very tricky questions. Sometimes they ask you questions they expect that they know that you would not know. Okay. But now this is where it gets tricky. It's like, how do you handle not knowing something? Okay. So you need to be very good in saying, hey, look, I'll get back to you with an answer. Something I actually did in one of my interviews is that um, they asked me a very hard question. I was nailing yes. like, all the technical questions. But yes. then here's this guy, so like, okay, you're actually quite prepared. It must be something very hard. And I was like, no, look. Don't have the answer at the moment, yes. but I will get back to you, you know, once I've done a, a bit of research. Because yes. that is the type of individual, right, that they're looking for. Yes, yeah. Literally, after the interview, went back, like, searched online, understood. And it was a very complex because, I mean, I was asking bankers and they were struggling to answer the yes. question. So then I get back, came back to him with the answer. And yeah. I mean, I think it did me in good stead because it did end up giving me that final round. Yes. Um... And then final round is usually with, so that would usually be with the, the uh, vice president, executive director. Okay. So just before the top. And then at last interview, BMD, ED. Okay. Um, yeah, that is when it, that's when it's a lot more personal. It's a lot more what type of person you are. You're likable. Like, you'd be having conversations, maybe you walk them through a deal, your interests. And I think that's more of, where they do that culture gauge, does this person fit the culture? And I mean, look, I mean, people are very professional, very smart, well, hard work, and driven in banking, but I think they're people too. Okay. So, I mean, you, if you have genuine interest, you tell them that you have genuine interest. I mean, okay. it's not like you want to lie, say, oh, I'm interested in golf, because you might think that that yes. guy likes golf. No, you just need to be honest. Um, I think there it's different because as I'm running through this interview process, I'm actually just mixing the experiences across, because I, I literally only did it for two firms till the very end, yes. which gave me the offer. So I actually am sort of mixing, so it's not specific to the firm I work with. Makes sense. Other, but yeah. like, this is more or less how they both ran their process. Yes. So, but now... What, what kind of personality traits would you say they're looking for? Look, driven. Like, I mean, very, very driven. Okay. Um, determined. I think very passionate about corporate finance. Um, I think you actually do have to have a genuine interest in the markets. Like, I was to ask you, What's the US, what's the exchange rate? Like, this is not even like high level, but if I was sure. like, what's USDs are right now? Yeah. I mean, you can't tell me like finance and you don't even know where the RAND is. Yeah. It's like, what is important? Like, you need to just know basics. Where's gold? Where's the RAND? Where's the JC trading at? Yes. Um, and I think, other than that, I think just likable because we spend very long hours with each other. Yeah. So I do think there has to be some element of yourself that, you know, people can get along with, find a common thread. Sure. So I think it gets tricky. But then after that final round now, there's an assessment center. Now this is for usually an actual grad. Like, oh like God, an actual grad. More? Okay. Yeah, it, it's a very, very long process. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's it actually like just a long doesn't... to print it. Okay, yes, you get down at the assessment. So an assessment center is now um, uh, where you get tested on technicals. There's case studies, yes. similar to like, also consulting interviews, I actually ran through that process as before as well. Um, there's case studies, multiple different individuals, then they rank you, then they see, do you get the job or not? So I think that's more or less the overall process. Differs from firm to firm, some don't have assessment centers, some do, um, but yeah, overall it is very, it's a very grueling process and you really need to be prepared because you get the call anytime, like you have your interview last week, and then Tuesday sounds like an speak tomorrow. So there's no time to like prep now that the Makes thing sense. starts. So that's why, why you must prep before. months before. Yeah. Makes sense. Two months, two, three months before I think was sufficient. But I mean, if you know that there's an area which you lack, um, for example, academically, you yeah. have to make up for it in something else. So yes. like you need to have your technicals on lock. For me, that's like, the biggest piece of advice I would give to anyone. Yes. And actually, something I very important that I left out. Yeah. You actually need to know a deal. Like, how does a deal work? Like, I mean, let me use something that's... Do you learn that in university or is that like research you'd have to do I think it's a, it's a combination of both. I mean, it helps if you do mergers and acquisitions like in varsity, but it also helps if you just understand 
what is happening like. Um, let me try to think of a past deal that has happened. Walmart, MassMart. MassMart literally, Walmart literally bought back. It was previously listed on the JSC. MassMart bought back. I mean, Walmart bought back all of its MassMart stock and they privatized it. Why? You need to understand like, like just knowing the why, the very basic why, there's always an underlying reason. It's like share price is trading too low. They believe there's more value if they, if they held it themselves without any external shareholders. That is literally all it comes. It's like having that basic understanding. There's no need to have a thesis, you know, and thesis. But I, I mean, once you have that basic level of understanding, I think it shows that you understand what you're doing. Yeah, right? makes yeah. a lot of sense. And now when you start working, is it like an environment where you get trained or are you just thrown into the fire? Combination of both. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, because it's a very client-facing role, you're not just going to get thrown in. I yeah. mean, there's a lot of training. Um, I think they need to test your aptitude. Um, yeah, what do you know what you don't know? But there's just basics. There's just a way of understanding from systems, the way that they do things, the way that they format things, um, the approach when doing work, like everything is methodological. So like if someone asks you to do a task, there is an actual process for each type of task that you need to run through to make sure that it's a high quality product at mm. the end. So they'd really be ingraining that to you. It's like, hey, do this, come back. Do this, come, come back. back. Okay. It's a very, there's a very high, very high quality control in the work because it's like analysts goes to the associates. Associate comes back to you. Back to your associate. Okay, so it's maybe one more change. Then it goes to your VP. Okay, okay VP iterating with the associate. Then, but at the end of the day, you're the one making the change. So he's iterating now with you and the associate. Because yes. it's like, you know, you're like the first line of defense as like the most junior person. Sure. Team, if there's a piece of work, then you get guidance on what to do structurally. Sure. Um, and they guide you to where you can maybe, because people have been doing this for 20, 30 years. Yeah. That are your seniors. So it's like, for them, it's second nature. But I mean, they're training you to sort of align with their way of doing things. So it makes, makes it very efficient. But it's still hot as well because it's like you don't know anything, but then stuff still needs to get done. So if a deadline is Tuesday and it's taking you four hours, maybe eventually you're doing that four hour task in an hour. Yes. But it's still that means you're up. Yes. I mean you come in on weekends, you are learning. Because everyone is actually trying to teach you how to do everything in the most efficient way possible. Sure. Because it it's because such a chain effects like if I drop the ball the needs doesn't get to that person. And there's like three other people that need to review that stuff. So yeah. it's like, uh, I've just extended the deadline by day. Okay. So yeah, it is very hard. They train you, they hold your hand quite a lot in the beginning. That's so like good. you'll be doing something. Like, That's good, at least. Yeah, 10 minutes in, someone will be like, uh, Cizo, uh, how are we doing on that? Huh? <laughs> That's no, no, micromanaging. That's not I handled. Think, I, think, I, I think in the beginning, it is essential because like, yeah. you know, you have to check for like for example even if you're checking your work that's a very big thing in investment banking like we tick every number yeah on a page so if there's like three pages of number like we look that is the source confirm that is the source confirm like you'll do the work for three hours you will check it for three hours that is the process of it right because Jeez. people are paying a lot of money for the services yeah. that you know the firm provides i think the standards need to be quite high right? makes a lot of sense yeah what are the working hours like um, come on, don't quote me on this. The very difference <laughs> um, across the phone. Also, it's depending on team size. Um, yeah, number of deals you're working on. I mean, I, I, I will say hours. Some of my friends work. Some of the hours I've worked. Um, it varies. As a junior, though, I mean, at, at best, at earliest, maybe you might leave at 10 p.m. So you come in at nine, leave at 10. That's on a Good day. Qu quiet day ish. Maybe around midnight ish. Because the thing is, fortunate in our office, you can leave at like eight, but you have to continue working from home. So, it, I, I mean, as long as you get the work done, you know, at night, that's fine. But I mean, it's just always more efficient to work at the office, right? Because yes. of, of the proper setup, support, you know, just turning around and asking a question yes. as opposed to having to call. When it gets later, yeah, you're, you're definitely seeing early AMs type of hours. But it differs across firm because it's not it's not a regular thing. It's like deal dependent, like at what stage that deal is, how much you have to work. I have some friends who actually maybe maybe work the odd 
of the midnight hours because maybe they have a larger team okay but maybe they don't have as much deal flow as well because I'm, yes. I'm not going to lie the firm i work at has quite a bit of deal flow so okay. i think you you are constantly working yeah and i mean if you're trying to come up with exceptional ideas it does mean it's a lot of iterations there's a lot of thinking analysis going into that which results in those long hours makes sense um and in terms of like um how they pay do they pay well don't they pay well i mean i won't disclose exact numbers but of course i mean you are definitely not struggling okay um even as a grad i was not struggling at all okay you are very well compensated for what you do yeah um i mean you can search online more or less how much investment banking analysts um, get paid and maybe the uk would be a better comparison maybe i just made that slightly down depending on the firm and i think that should more or less get you where bankers are paid in south africa um i mean all of them are doing quite well for themselves maybe yes. then like the two years of working people are able to buy houses and cars and travel so i mean it is a very rewarding career but i mean obviously it comes with hours of course yeah yeah and um is career progression something that is easy or something that you really have to work hard for i think i like banking because the career projection uh, progression is very structured so okay. it's like you know depending on your analyst program some analyst programs are two years some are three years then you get promoted to associate okay. but even as an analyst you know there's a clear distinction between an analyst one yes. and an analyst two yeah sometimes analyst three if you're back as a three-year analyst program then you get promoted to associates. That's where things get slightly trickier. You could be an associate for three years, four years. Okay. Um, before you get promoted to VP, which is vice president. Then there, it's also more than like three years, four years on average before you get promoted to ED. And then I think, yeah, people, yeah, it gets tricky like that. Yeah. I mean, it, sometimes, it, depending on your performance space, like if you're filming, you has two VPs, um, I mean, and maybe less associates, like, ah, Maybe it's time for you to switch shops because they can't have three VPs. Yes. There's no budget for three yes. VPs. Yes, makes sense. So it's like these are considerations you have to make. But I think it's very strict, especially as a junior. Um, yeah, your career progression is very clear, and you see the step change in the responsibility that you're given. Okay. So I mean that is great. There's just certain things an associate is not supposed to do. Yes. That's what an analyst is not supposed to do. Yeah. You know. So they clearly define that. Yeah. I think, fortunately, slash fortunately, this Mac is very hierarchical. So it's like responsibilities are clear, okay. promotion levels are clear. Yes. So I think that helps a lot in terms of division of responsibilities. Okay. And um, lastly, like, what tips would you give someone who um, maybe didn't get into the space, like after doing all the interviews or whatever? How, like, what tips would you give them to try again? and you know make it this time i think it's about positioning right um i mean one reason i did my degree was like okay i know another way to break into investment bank even though it's the longer way is to become a chartered accountant mm. then enter the industry or do something but i would say you would try one to maybe put yourself in a career that's sort of closely aligned with investment banking um i think that helps because the skills because maybe it, it becomes tricky because there's a lot of corporate finance shops actually in South Africa, I'm not going to lie. I mean, there's boutiques, there's internationals, there's your local banks who have a lot of slots. So I think there will always be a, you know, a way to enter. And maybe you, you're going to come in as a sponsor, maybe you join debt capital markets and means maybe in straight of like, like M&A. Um, so it's about really like maybe taking a position in a bank that's sort of aligned with the front office, but not necessarily investment banking itself because i think like in terms of pure corporate finance there are not a lot of roles mm. so i think it sometimes helps to maybe join a support role which which kind of helps as well but i think a lot of what i've seen a lot of people do is study further so people usually do some form of masters in finance get an internship and then you know they maneuver around because you'd be surprised they guys who are engineers um, the guys who are like, quantity surveyors have like switched careers completely to join banking and people take very different routes to get in. I think, you know, you'd actually find there are actually a lot more people who broke in via like unconventionally as opposed to people that actually went to a grad program or got hired straight out of school. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. So, you know, don't give up. There's always a way in. 
Um, and then if people do want to reach you on LinkedIn, yes, I'm very responsive. Okay. I mean, that's the only real social. It's just that I'm private on my other social media, but LinkedIn, I'm happy to reach out, help anyone. I am super, super, I'm very, very responsive in terms of helping people break in, so, to share resources. Most of the time people are like, well, send me an object, pop me a mail. These are all the resources I use. Go yes. through this. I mean, because a lot of people are interested in banking. Yes. For me, it's like a gauge. I send you that stuff. If you actually go through it, um, you know, and you're interested, I'll even send you a copy of my CV, see how you formatted it accordingly. Happy to take a look. Happy to take a chat. Happy to also be very realistic. Yes. Um, you know, it's fine. I can tell someone whether they get in or not, but I, yes. mean, I can be like, okay, maybe have you thought of taking this approach yes and sometimes connecting people if someone's a very strong candidate you know i'm also very happy to do that i think it's a it's a space firm believe in transformation i'm not going to lie to you so That's i good. think in a very in a space that is still very geared towards the more traditional side overall yes. yeah um i think it would be good to make sure that the space shows adequate representation that's of great. very high quality you know african candidates yes that's great and um what what is your name on linkedin uh so Cizo butelezi okay just one well Cizo luet one period butelezi okay. actually that's my that's my linkedin and yeah i'm very i'll, I'll accept not accept but i mean i will reply yes i will always reply okay yeah. no thank you and thank you so much for your time this has been very informative um and i hope you guys also get value from this um and like you said you can reach him on his linkedin on season Butelezi. and yeah he'll send you the links i will add in the link to the 101 questions yeah. yes that one um at the in my description box but yeah See you guys next time and don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Bye. Cheerio.